lifetime wondering why we made it out and the others didn't. How something like that could happen. I'll tell you one thing. Whatever you heard about 242, it was worse. Documents unearthed from United Development Agency knew about or even predicted the storms of the lives of four contractors on Icarus several years ago. What was the UDA's reaction to the leaked transmission? We tried to keep the transmission out of the news for the families of the victims, but it was too late. Otis left for Icarus when he was 22. He said he was going to come back richer than anyone. It was the last time I saw him. We knew that Icarus was dangerous. But this was different. That storms like that could kill. No one knew. People say storms. Storms are what happen on Earth. This was like the whole planet turned against you. When you're talking about storms on Icarus, you can't compare the power and uh, destruction of those events with anything on Earth. It's completely different. They're a hundred times deadlier. What happened was tragic, and we lost a lot of good people. But could it have been avoided? How? Is the UDA responsible? No. Tell that to Isaac Keller. He was UDA Earthcoms. He always said that they knew that the storm was coming. But exotics always mattered more. He tried to go public with it, and look what happened. Well, I'm about to finish what he started, because now I can prove it. teams to make it to Icarus, first cohort. New to the planet, new to each other. We'd only done a few drops, but we made a good team. We met on Earth, rode out together, then defrosted on Ceres Station. Those first drops, UDA wanted us to learn how to handle ourselves. We needed a score some exotics to get us on the board and out of the UDA's pocket. That's how they ran it. Well, being so far from Earth, resources were scarce. That was the challenge. But there was still so much we didn't know about Icarus, and that's why we were there, to learn. I used to be UDA. I worked under Isaac for years, and he was good at what he did. I don't care what anyone says. But then terraforming collapsed, and we discovered exotics. Exotics changed everything. Space travel, they opened the galaxy to us, dozens of planets. But as we studied them, these new worlds, we... We learned how unique Icarus really was. The UDA knew they'd hit gold. They just needed some people to bring it back for them. I quit. UDA didn't care about those prospectors. I tried to tell Otis. They were tools, nothing else. I couldn't be a part of that. 
The success of operations on Icarus depends and has always depended on the well-being of the women and men who work there. Their safety is paramount. But safety protocols exist because there are risks. They're never foolproof. While some parts of Icarus may resemble Earth, remember, this is an alien world with many different threats. The storms were wild. Winds that could snap trees in half. We assumed that was the bad weather. We thought we knew what we were up against. We had no idea. Icarus is a similar size to Earth, orbiting Minos, a gas giant. This means it's uh, subject to immense tidal forces. Under those conditions, stability is impossible. When the terraforming failed, it destabilized Icarus even further. We didn't hurt it. We just made it angry. <laughs> so far from Earth, you must be careful to follow all guidelines and safety directives. Remember, they're there for your protection. We had a simple plan. Stick to the forest for shelter, spiraling out till we found a seam of exotics so we weren't too far from our pods when the drop window closed. You must be prepared to find or make shelter at short notice as conditions on the surface can change extremely rapidly. When the first storm hits, the problem wasn't that it was bad. The problem was it wasn't. If it had been worse, we might have pulled out, but we handled it. We built shelter, put our fires where lightning hit, fixed anything we needed to. You could think of storms on Icarus as being in some ways like earthquakes, but in reverse. Uh, the aftershocks come first. Cells perceive the main event along an arc determined by factors like the planet's orbit, rotation, and Coriolis force. It's a dynamical system. Long periods of calm converging in sudden resonant states. Extreme high energy events. We know exotics affect them too even if we're still learning how. Otis was gone. I'd heard almost nothing. The UDA said it was an accident, but I didn't know what to think. Finally, I reached out. Isaac was management, and I knew it could get him in trouble, but I had to know. The UDA sent all Icarus comms logs back to Earth on a slow beam. It took years, but eventually, all he had to do was search the logs for the day the storm hits. And surprise. The Lagos unit had sent an alert to the orbital stations. They knew the course of the storm and its intensity. They knew. They knew. Isaac wasn't sure about going to the media. But what? We were just going to keep that to ourselves? Originating from X terraforming stations around Icarus itself. UDA hopes your time on Icarus is... The data was allegedly uncovered by a UDA Datanetics employee. UDA spokesperson Jean Hurd. The commander of Ceres Station has been relieved of his post, effective immediately. Messages are missed sometimes, even priority ones. But there was no question someone needed to be held responsible. The responsibility for drop safety on Sarah's station lay with the station commander. He greenlit drop 242. He was removed. They fired the OS commander, and then they fired Isaac. Blacklisted from every major corp in the ACS. That's the price you pay for doing the right thing. This far from Earth, the best guardian of your safety is you. We searched for another day and a half, higher up, below the tree line. Then, it happened. Electrical storms occur on Earth when air masses shift against each other, stripping electrons and accumulating charge. But on Icarus, the violence of air movement and the difference in atmospheric composition increases the energy tenfold. Lightning struck the shelter, and I could see with my eyes closed as how bright it was. I remember thinking, this is why our ancestors believed in gods. The forest was burning. This 
wave of fire pushing through and, and the heat. The shelter was coming down around us. But Javier wouldn't give up. He kept beating the flames down. He just kept going. It was too late. But that's how he was. Then the roof went. I watched it happen. I tried to reach him. There was no way. We had very little data on Icarus's electrical storms. No real proximity readings, nothing. Like what Drop 242 experienced. The data they brought back was invaluable. We were crazy to think that we could change that planet. It fought back. It's still fighting back. There was nothing we could do for Javier after that, but there was no time to think. We had to get away from the firestorm, so we moved north into the mountains. We talked about it, whether to continue. Otis spoke to Sarah Station, and they told him that the forecast was good, that we were in the clear, so we kept going. Javier was gone, but giving up would have sunk us all. It was calm, this untouched world where no one had ever been. It was beautiful. As the temperature fell, a new weather system was evolving at that altitude. The Alpine zones, their feedback systems were beyond unstable. We received the first warning two hours out. It was hard to believe what we were looking at. The speed it was coming in. Moving into the wind, I could feel every grain of ice, even through my suit. It's impossible to describe that sound beyond noise. It envelops you until there's nothing left. I couldn't see almost anything, hear anything. We were just trying to find shelter, and my suit was at its limit. Lee was behind me. All I saw was a shadow, then he was gone. We never found his body, and there were no prints, but it must have been a bear. What else could it have been? If we stopped, we were dead. Under those conditions, a rescue was impossible. It, the storm would have smashed any ship into the mountainside. It, it would have been suicide. UDA fired the commander, patted themselves on the back, and hoped that it would all blow over. And maybe it would have if they hadn't fired Isaac. But then he disappeared and that's when the real hackers stepped up. Isaac was a coder at heart. He was one of them. They just wanted the truth, that's all. Answers, or they'd get it themselves. At first, people didn't take him seriously. Now they wish they'd had. In the event of an accident or equipment failure on the surface, responsibility for your survival rests with you and your team alone. There were cliffs to the west. We couldn't see anything, but that was our only chance at shelter. I had Otis with me. He was suffering from exposure, frostbite. Dara was with me, but she fell. I couldn't get her up. She wouldn't move. Zella got us to the cliffs. At the foot, we got lucky, found a cave. We tried to keep Otis warm, but we had so little fuel. His suit was damaged. We tried to fix it. It wasn't enough. He died before dawn, as the storm was fading. The cave that saved us was his tomb. Knowing that your child is four light years away, it's not natural. But getting a call two years later telling you that he'll never... Uh, that he'll never...
in the morning we found Dara where she'd fallen. Frozen. Like she was asleep. It took us two days to return to the dropships. And when we took off, I swore I'd never set foot on that fucking planet again. If you need a break, it's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Were you surprised about how much data the hackers found? The hackers turned the UDA servers inside out. Every single file and communication, looking for anything. Millions of messages, here and Icarus. Years of work. What's your response to the hackers and the fact that they release so much of UDA's data? Mm. Under any definition, it's terrorism. But we're fighting back. It's extortion. And for what? Well, they, they found actually the original storm warning message that the Lagos station sent. Yes, I've seen this. But it was retrieved from Sirius Station servers. It still has the timestamp on it. Mm-hmm. So? It was sent three days after the storm. The warning came three days later. Three days. UDA told Lagos to ignore the storms. It's the only explanation. They're protecting themselves. That's all this has ever been about. It was late, I see that. But it was bad luck, that's all. A faulty server clock, data updating, human error. We're... No one's hiding anything here. Yeah, no, of course. But it's mm -hmm. interesting though, isn't it? The timestamp had been erased on the original message Isaac pulled from the UDA logs on Earth. Well, if you're looking for missing data, you should take a closer look at those hacked logs. Otis said he spoke to Sarah Station about the forecast. He told his team the storms were finished. But that conversation, that's not there. Because it never happened. He wanted his team to move on. So he lied to them. He was too ambitious. He wanted the money. But I didn't think he'd risk our lives. It was the UDA put us in that position. We had to push on. Otis knew that. He just told us what we needed to hear. That's all. Otis was ambitious, I know. But this, this was survival. Exotics were his ticket home. For all of them, the UDA set it up that way. And now they'll say anything to discredit us. That's how they work. I'd hoped to protect his mother because she's been through enough. But Otis lied to his team and people died. That's what happened. That's the truth. The UDA hopes your time on Icarus is safe and successful. You want to blame someone? Blame prospectors like me who were dumb enough to go there in the first place. Who's responsible? Do the math. Who gains the most from exotics? Here's a clue. No one on Icarus. Exotics unlocked our future. New worlds, technology no one imagined, peace on Earth, life among the stars. Do we regret what happened? Yes, absolutely. Did people make mistakes on Icarus? Of course. But were the sacrifices worth it? Look around you. I can't change the past. But I can help the future. The price we're paying is too high. We're putting our children, our children, in the hands of people who only care about one thing.
You ask me why I'm doing this? Why? Because nothing has changed. People are still dying out there. Over.